folks at home, welcome back to the Crimson Oak Pond, and if you missed the previous videos in this pond build series, I'll put a link down in the description below. All right, now that the weather has cooled off, a lot of the fish out there have moved out deep, and it's gonna make it a little tougher to film them, but we're about to give it our best shot. So we're gonna start off out there with the underwater drone, and I'm just gonna cruise around until I find a good brush pile with some fish on it. And then here's a pretty neat system called an aqua view. And it's basically got a camera attached to this cable and I can drop it right off the side of the boat and I'll get a real time image of the fish on this display. We might do a quick demonstration right here by the bluegill feeder here in just a second. So we should get some good footage with that, but also have one other camera system that you use on a fishing rod. And it's an inline camera that actually looks back and films whatever bait you're using. So we might even be able to film catching a fish out there. That would be pretty cool. But you can see I've got braid on the front end of it and fluorocarbon on the back end. So if I get hung up, hopefully the lure breaks and I don't lose my camera. The first thing we're gonna do is set this up right here at the feeder. Maybe even try to catch a little bluegill in front of the camera. And one other side note, you can't film video with this camera system, unfortunately. So I had to buy one of these units, basically a pass through, got a bunch of cables involved. So I'm not sure what the video quality is gonna be. We'll find out here in just a second. That's a pretty cool shot right there. So I've got one of the protein pellets on a hook, dangling that down there in front of the bluegills. And it's almost like playing a video game. I can watch them come up to it and inspect it. And I'm gonna have to go ahead and say this is a pretty cool tool. And if you're a fisherman, you could learn a ton about how to present a bait to a fish. The first thing that stands out to me is how exposed this hook is. And it doesn't really seem like it would fool a fish. Got a lot of them interested, but no more takers. So I wasn't that impressed with the video quality, so I'm going to put it in Tiger's fish tank and try to dial some of the settings in. And let's just see how he reacts. <laughs> he finally realizes there's something in his tank, and now he's just trying to decide if it's food or not. <laughs> he said get that thing out of here all right now it's time to take a dive with the drone and explore the pond bottom and when i find some structure piles we'll stop and go down with the aqua view you can see this is the long pipe that we installed at the beginning of the build to fill it up with water and now we're about eight feet deep and the video quality isn't great because there's not much light down here but the one interesting thing i see is that we have vegetation growing at the deepest parts of the pond. I would have never thought sunlight would have penetrated that deep. There's something I'll have to keep an eye on. Now we're at our first big structure pile. We've got a lot of limbs. Down about five feet deep. There should be some fish around this area. Yep, we spotted the first bass. Now it's time to drop down a different camera and get some better footage. All right, I'm out here with aqua view first. I just got set up on one of these brush piles. And as you can see, I'm just holding the camera cable in my hands here. And there you can see all the brush. And our first little guy to stop by and check out the camera is a bluegill. And we got a couple of bass swimming by and wow, they seem to be a pretty good size. I would say at least a pound. And that's why I wanted to check out some of these deeper brush piles because my thoughts were that the bigger females would be out here deep. Typically the females will hang out in the shallow during the spawning season, but they like to move out to that cooler deep water in the summer and warmer deep water in the winter. And this is turning out to be some pretty cool footage. I could watch this stuff all day. But I'm happy to see that some of the bluegills are working their way away from the feeders because this is out about six to seven feet deep and not really around a feeder at all. And something that's interesting is all of the bluegills so far have been males. If you see one of the copper nose bluegills that has the vertical stripes on their back, the dark ones, that's one easy way to identify that it's a male. And I'm pretty sure that's one of the bricks that we use to tie some of these logs down that you can see down there on the bottom. And I'm going to have to keep filming these underwater shots throughout the year because it probably won't be too long before the bass and bluegills are no longer hanging out together. We put two of these little guys, Tiger and Copper, in our 50-gallon aquarium. 
And eventually, the bass started looking at the bluegill as food rather than a tank mate. And I'm sure that as soon as the bass wipe out some of these threadfin shad, <laughs> they're going to turn their eyes to the bluegills. So I kept riding around the pond with the underwater drone. And even though the footage wasn't great, I found several schools of bass. And typically when you found one, you found several of them. And the drone's helping me figure out what parts of the pond the fish are using. And also letting me get an idea of their weight. And a lot of these fish seem to be around a pound, which is right on track. They're about five months old. And when we put them in, they were about two inches long. And a lot of these are measuring anywhere from 10 to 12 inches. And a lot of tiger bass will grow around two pounds a year. So having several around one pound after five months is perfect. And you know, we're always cooking up something new out here at the farm pond. And today I'm going to show you a couple of my favorite crab meat recipes, including crab cakes and also a good game day jumbo lump crab dish. And this video is brought to you by Kamikoto Knives. We've been using these knives since we started the pond build and I'm still extremely impressed with them. They're made out of high quality Japanese steel and they always have a very sharp edge. So for the crab cakes, you wanna start out with one egg, two tablespoons of mayo, one quarter of a cup of cornmeal, and some green onions. And you wanna get all of that mixed together in a bowl with your crab meat. Next up, I like to add some olive oil to a cast iron skillet. And when the oil gets hot, use a teaspoon to drop your crab meat in. And while those cook, I'm gonna show you one other recipe that you can use with any of the leftover crab meat. But it's very simple. You just take a half a cup of apple cider vinegar, a quarter of a cup of oil, some green onions, and whatever seasoning you prefer. I like Tony's. Get all that mixed together and it's ready to serve. But the Kamikoto knives come in several different sets, but our favorite is probably the Kampeki. It seems to be perfect for our needs. It comes with a seven inch vegetable knife, a eight and a half inch slicing knife, and a five inch utility knife. But don't just take it from me. These knives are used by Michelin star chefs all across the world. And they also come in this nice wooden box, which makes it perfect for a gift. So if you're interested in checking them out, I'll put a link down in the video description that'll give you $50 off a knife set. So one of the things I love about filming wildlife is every once in a while, you'll come across those one in a million animals or fish that just have giant personalities. And we've seen it in the past with Moby and Sheriff, and it looks like Tiger's gonna be one of those as well. But I never would have thought that I would have said that about a duck until this guy flew into the pond. And folks, this duck has a huge personality and could eventually become a legend. So the tale starts out one cold morning when he flies into the Crimson Oak Pond, but there were no other ducks in sight. And initially he was lonely, swimming around, checking out the pond, until one day he came across one of the female decoys. And let's just say, he really thought that she was a real duck. So let's skip that part. But now that he had a home and a new girlfriend, things were going great. But he's a curious duck with a big personality, so every time a new animal would show up to the pond, he had to go over and check things out. So it didn't matter if it was a cat or a crow, he tried to make friends with every animal that stopped by and visited the pond. He's a very curious guy, always wanting to learn the ways of the other wildlife. And after dark, he would stay awake all night protecting his new hen decoy. And just when life was going great for the drake, things took a turn when Hooter the owl showed up. And we all know that owls have been a longtime nemesis of the duck. And because Hooter had been here since the beginning of the pond build, we knew there were going to be some turf wars. So let's watch it unfold. was wild. But not only is he dodging the owl's attacks, he's also standing up, flapping his wings and flexing. 
basically saying that he's not afraid of the owl. And I've always heard that ducks have poor nighttime vision, but the fact that he was able to dodge all of those attacks is truly impressive. But good things come to the good guys, and this went from being a nightmare to a love story when a female hooded merganser flew into the pond. It was love at first sight. So now he spends his days following her around the pond and protecting her. So folks, you know we've got to name this truly legendary duck. So leave me a comment down below on what you think we should name him. Because the story's going to take another turn in next week's video when a juvenile bald eagle shows up to the pond. Can't wait to show you that. And if you missed our previous video, we started the tagging process with all of our bass. We're going to tag our pets when we put them in the five acre pond. And we're also going to tag the first 100 bass we catch out of here for a contest. We're going to start tagging a few bass each week. Quick and simple process. Just use this to scan the pit tags. And we're going to be out there, drop shot rig and a small swim bait. There's one. Got him. Got a cold front moving through. I figured they'd be biting. Real pale looking guy, but he's fat and he's been eating. That means he's been out there deep, not up here in the sunshine. I know he doesn't have a tag in him because he looks completely different, but we'll scan him just to be sure. All right, this little guy is 96.71. Probably a young male because we've got some big females in here now. So I had plans to tag several bass this week, but unfortunately the weather did not cooperate. So Dottie was the only fish that got tagged this week. But if you're new to this, this is a contest we're having for you all where we're tagging the first 100 bass. If you missed our last video, go check it out. It explains all the details and how to enter the contest. But I did add several names to this list and I'll be updating you throughout each week as I pick more and more names. Got some good prizes that we're giving away. All you have to do to enter the contest is leave a fish name down below. Now it's time to feed the little pond mascot we call Tiger. He's aggressive just like Moby is, and it won't be long before we move him out of this 50 gallon aquarium and put him in the 300 gallon aquarium that Moby's currently in. And a lot of you have asked about the process of that, and we're basically taking our first two pet bass, Bonnie and Clyde, that are in the backyard pond, and when we move them to the five acre pond, we're gonna take Moby out of the 300 gallon aquarium and put him in the backyard pond. And that's when Tiger gets upgraded to the 300 gallon. And we're pretty much stuck with that process because bass can be a little territorial. And when you add a new bass into its home, they can get a little aggressive. You got exciting news? Oh, why do you think that? Because I see eggs. All right. It's going to be baby ducklings. All right. So if you missed the last video, we had 10 baby ducks hatch, and they've been a lot of fun. We taught them how to eat and drink. They've got this little process where they have to grab some food and then some water, mix it together, and that's just how ducks eat. But here in the next week or two, whenever they get a little bit older and are able to swim, we're going to introduce them to the pond and the duck house we call Duckingham Palace. Just imagine this little guy out there on the splash pad. All right, down here in our little half acre food plot, it's coming up pretty good. The deer are also hitting it hard. We feed them that rack attack down there in the bottom, about to go replenish it. Guaranteed to get some action here tonight. And we'll watch on the camera, see what comes out. And you know that this is some good stuff when a mama doesn't even want her own baby eating out of her pile. And time for an update on the coyotes. There's still a pack of them running around out here on the farm. So far, even though they're grouped up together, we hadn't seen them chasing after any fawns. Even though I know a lot of you say it's inevitable, but we're still keeping an eye on it.
we got everybody in this shot. We got George Jones walking down the pond dam. We got Romeo hanging out with his decoy at night. And all the deer enjoying some of that apple corn. So I just had a little accident. I was filming out here in the pond and I dropped a GoPro right out there by that duck decoy. And I went and got the AquaView camera and I actually spotted it. It's just on the back side of that decoy there. So I just left and went and got this magnet and we're gonna drop it down and do some magnet fishing. I like fishing, but I've never tried magnet fishing before. I'm gonna give this about a 20 to 25% chance of actually recovering it. Because even though it's on a tripod, I'm not sure how much of it is actually metallic. I think the GoPro is, but it's such a small surface area. So let's give it a shot. All right, it was right here between these two decoys. There goes the duck flying right over me. But the problem is there's a lot of structure down there. It was laying on a huge log. So I didn't have any luck recovering the GoPro, but if there's any of you magnet fishermen out there, give me some tips. And plan B can always be getting some scuba gear and just diving down there and getting it. And now it's time to feed Mr. Moby. Alright folks, that is going to wrap up this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button because as you can see, there is an abundance of wildlife making this pond their new home. And we're excited to see these little bass and bluegill grow up and have a lot of cool things planned for them in the future. But I hope you all enjoyed this video and we will see you all next time.